Okay, everybody, how's it going? Good morning. It is uh, is early. It is almost 8 o'clock. It is 7.51 in the morning on a Monday. And uh, it's number 9. Tick episode number 9. Tick podcast number 9. And, um, you know, uh, this is going to be kind of like less than pop culture related and uh, really a little bit more... Uh, introspective and uh, kind of, kind of like about me, um, what's going on in my wheelhouse and world and everything. And you know, lately I've had a lot of really exciting things happen and just big things. And uh, I feel like my creativity is like really creative right now. Like I just feel like in the zone. And, you know, everybody goes through the, the, the art block, you know, the, the feeling where you're stuck and you can't seem to get anything right and you just th- think that everything you make sucks. Well, when you get past that, you get, like, really excited about what you make and everything just feels really exciting and fun and maybe not your greatest work, but definitely fun. And that's about where I am today. And, uh, you know, I just had, like, tons of big ideas. I've been brainstorming all year, and I feel like today, or at least in the middle of last night, it all sort of clicked. It it felt like it made sense. And I'm like, okay, this this is something that is podcast-worthy. This is something that I, I could talk about for a little bit. So, um, in September last year, I officially... Uh, formed Tick Studios LLC, and I became official. Uh, my registered business it it got uh, totally legit, and then uh, the following month I got a trademark, and so I am a fully company, fully formed company, and uh, I'm a hundred percent legit and everything, and. Um, you know, I wanted to do animation. That that was like the thing that I wanted to do. And, um, you know, my focus was to be independent and to be like, you know, a one man studio, someone who could uh, produce content for a fair price for, uh, you know, high concept stuff that, you know, you wouldn't see Netflix really touch without, like, you know, there being a whole bunch of safety in, like, sales and stuff like that. So, you know, um, that's kind of a hard sell, you know? How are you going to market yourself for being, like, ambitious when you're one guy, and how are you going to market yourself for doing niche-type animation? Like, I'm an adult animator. I, I do rated R content, like Rip the Falcon is extremely violent and uh, very heavy-handed with its subject matter and um, you know I can't really I can't really pitch that to anyone but like AMC so you know um, and you know by the way I wouldn't because I want the rights but you know Rip the Falcon is clearly an adult show and you know I I want to do that kind of show um and uh i'm lucky enough to have worked on a web comic and we're adapting that to animation so rise of the sky titans is going to be a web series and i cannot wait literally but um beyond that um i'm thinking okay now what you know what's next what's the big thing and the bigger picture i think is that, you know, my whole thing is that I'm kind of like a kitchen sink animator. Like, you know, that's my that's my selling point. You know, like out of out of the things that I can say, well, I'm good at this. Um I'm good at being a uh, kind of gritty and kind of alternative. You know, like my my whole animation style is um grungy and uh it's it's really got that kind of like mtv liquid tv 90s feel to it and um you know when i look on linkedin or 
Twitter, for example, um, all the people who are, you know, sharing their animations, they look so polished. Uh, they look like better than stuff I make. Um, you know, just completely like Disney style. And I'm not saying that's bad. I really am trying to compliment them right now. And, you know, you look at my stuff and, um, you know, it's definitely grungy. And you think like, oh man, what is this guy doing? You know, what am I doing compared to these guys? Like, this guy isn't an animator, right? But, you know, um, I, uh, I had a friend who I made recently kind of give me a lot of ideas. And um, one of the things that I wanted to do uh, with Rip the Falcon was collaborate with Grunge. Because Rip the Falcon is really a grunge show. He is like a cross between me and Eddie Vedder. Um, you know, like his whole mannerisms are, you know, anti-war and anti-authority and kind of whatever attitude. And that's like all of the music that I listen to. I mean, I listen to a lot of music, but you know, you have your favorite genre. And while I'm a huge music buff and I listen to all kinds of stuff, I'm always obsessed with 90s rock. And, um, you know, that got me thinking about where I could go with that. Because first, I started collaborating with an awesome new grunge band called Just A Ride. And if you guys are listening, I just want to say thanks uh, I love uh, your music, and I love working with you guys. I have so much fun editing uh, Rip the Falcon to your music, and I can't wait to work with you more. And um, I also, thanks to you guys, found out that there are other bands who play new alternative rock. So thanks to Just a Ride, I did some exploration and i found noise heads which is like another new favorite band and i uh reached out to them i got a hold of their discord and they gave me permission to use their single wait uh for the opening theme song of rip the falcon and i feel like it just matches so well with uh, the energy and the tone of my show and what I want to say with the show and the lyrics are perfect too and um, you know while I've been doing all these collaborations with uh, the, the Rip the Falcon show um, it's been turning me on to new music and new musicians like starting musicians um, thanks to you know COVID uh, you know a lot of a lot of bands are being online more. And, um, you know, I just recently met um, Alter Apex. And those guys are super cool. And uh, they're, they're really friendly. Um, I feel like, you know, thanks to this internet age and this, uh, you know, almost, almost kind of like radio-wise... Uh, version of the internet um, people seem to be broadcasting like never before I mean you know I'm a 90s kid who grew up from 1990 to now and in the 90s and the 2000s the radio was how you got big if your song got on a radio station that was it that was like your big thing and now it's like you can make a YouTube video and that will be your way to get up. Same thing with animation, too. And, you know, with social media, I used to hate social media. I used to think it sucked. But ever since I started taking it more like a tool instead of just like entertainment, it became really almost fun. It's like, wow, I have an audience. You know, people actually pay attention to what content I create. And it's accessible. It's like anybody could start from the ground up and then, like, actually go somewhere. I mean, obviously, there's going to be their, you know, there's going to be some easy clickbait stuff. 
but everybody starts out with zero subscribers and um you know every every subscriber i earn it really means a lot like even just one subscriber it feels like a gigantic win and um you know i'm almost close to 400 subs and to me that's huge because that would almost be uh 200 subscribers in a year so you know i'm just like really really like in the zone and uh going back to the music thing um i decided that i love collaborating with artists uh so much that you know i think that beyond the animated series stuff like i'm still planning to do rip the falcon for a long time like until i run out of like the story like i'm gonna finish it and then then it'll be done but um you know i'll be doing that for a long time it, it takes a long time to animate a five minute short but um you know i have work with uh megatunes network and that is going to be going strong and steady uh, so, you know, we have Rip the Falcon and Rise of the Sky Titans for web series. That's that's in the works. But, um, you know, for, for other animations, um, I'm really wanting to explore music and work with uh, independent uh, artists and musicians. Um, I want to, uh, you know, kind of be like, I don't know an affordable but really quality YouTube animator for hire. Um, you know, like, I want to basically be, you know, a, a, a music video guy. And I think that that's something that I would be really, like, good at. Especially for, like, you know, alternative rock and uh, hip-hop. I think that, you know, I could be that kind of that kind of attitude because you know in my experience when i sing and uh i'm not much of a player but i can sing when i when i perform music uh it's about energy more than technique for me for me some people are really technical but for me when i get on stage i'm just raw and that's i think coming through in my art and I think that is something that um, a lot of artists uh, really have, too. Like, you know, it's a quality that, you know, uh, it, it comes through in the music and, and the tone. Um, certainly comes through in, uh, you know, my friend's video that I, that I animated, uh, Zacky Sickness. A uh, friend of mine, Zach, uh, I grew up with him in Eugene. I've known the guy since, like, 2010. It's been, like, forever since I've known him. And uh, we've been buds the whole time. And it's it's crazy how long it's been. Like, you know, um, I, 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 never, I never thought much of it. But, you know, it's, it's really cool to say that, you know, I was friends with a band that both members of the band turned out to be like really cool musicians in their own right and um you know i decided to make like a a short a short demo you know like a, an example test of what i could do with like a short you know like a really loop style animation um i didn't do a whole a lot of, uh, you know, stuff with the video. I just made kind of like a small sequence. But I had a lot of fun making it, and it wasn't hard to uh, put out. Like, you know, I had an idea, and then I just sort of threw it together. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, if I wanted to really pay attention, get this stuff, like, fully formed and polished... Uh, it would look like, you know, unique and it would look badass. And, you know, that's that's kind of my selling point. 
Like, if you get a Tick Studios LLC animation, you're getting attitude. You're getting grunge. You're getting badass, you know? Um, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some kind of Disney guy or, like, a wannabe DreamWorks or Netflix guy. Like, you know, when I've talked to other animators, um, it tends to be that the little guys are so, so much nicer and helpful and want to make you do well. When I am on Discord for these, you know, professional, air quotes, professional um, servers, it's full of cynicism and snark and a lot of, like, put-downs. And, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't really call these guys, like, uh, really, like, helpful in any way. Um, you know, I, I, I know I'm probably, you know, bashing the shit out of these guys and they could be listening, but, you know, um, I think anybody could start and I think you don't need art school to go to do animation and I don't think you need high quality software. Like, I got a scholarship for getting all of the software and I'm eventually getting the nice version of Toon Boom and I have TV Paint uh, Pro and Clip Studio Paint beats the piss out of TV Paint. Um, I think TV Paint has one trick, and a one trick pony ain't good enough for for me to switch. Um, that one trick pony is uh, its color, but how am I supposed to really do a whole lot with flat tones? I mean, you know, when I actually try to do stuff with uh, TV Paint's color, it's it's like limited by the preset brushes. And you can't just, like, go Googling and find brush packs. Like, for about three weeks, I've had the software, and uh, it's, like, impossible to find free brushes. I have to go on Gumroad to buy what I might like instead of just on Clip Studio, go to the Clip Studio asset store and find free stuff, and it has pictures and portfolio reviews and all kinds of stuff, and it's limitless. I could find whatever I want, anything, anything at all. Like, I found a blood splatter brush. There's just so many things that I could do with Clip Studio Paint that TV Paint really, really feels just like... I mean, I could go on, but it's... It's, like, complicated for the sake of being expensive. It's $1,500. Like, are you kidding me? It's hardly even this, like, as better as Clip Studio Paint. It does the same stuff. The thing that makes it cool is that you can fill everything very fast. But, you know, like I said, I feel like the colors are totally limited. And the amount of stuff you could do is really up to someone who knows the software. But, um, you know, what I'm trying to illustrate with that point is that as this whole industry thing, you know, the, the industry standard, I'm really starting to feel like it's a bunch of, uh, you know, back alley deals with uh, software c giant companies because... Um, I'm seeing people do uh, incredible work with Procreate and Flip a Clip, and I think both are free. And uh, I, I've definitely heard way good things about OpenTunes, which is also free. And um, I started on Krita. If it didn't bug out on me all the time, I would use that all the time. But, you know, also, I use Clip Studio Paint EX, and it's on sale like uh, four times a year. And um, it's uh, it's cheap. It, even full price, it's cheap. It's uh, two hundred bucks, brand new, full price, and eighty bucks on sale. So, what I am trying to get at here is that this 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 cult, this cult, that you have to have the biggest software, the biggest tools, the 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 whole shebang. You have to suck Adobe's giant fat one 
Um, yeah, I, I don't like that. Okay, I don't, I don't like being trapped in some kind of paywall that I can never get out just to feel like I'm some kind of special person, you know. Um, I, I think that, you know, now you can get a laptop, uh, probably around three grand, and not have to upgrade it for years, and then just go ham on whatever you got. I use an Intuos Pro tablet from 2018. Things beat to hell, and it works like a tank. It's indestructible. It's like, it's a Wacom tablet. You could take it to a rack, and it will survive. Um, but, you know, what I'm trying to say is that you have the fucking power to just do it. To just fucking do it and I'm friends with people who do it I'm friends with the two next guys and all of them are just like crazy cartoonists that just do the fucking work and you know it comes out awesome it's funnier it's edgier it's it's got more balls than South Park um you know people have ideas but you know I think that you know it's it's almost like these uh, these Netflix and Hulu's and stuff. They want consumption. They want digestible bullshit. And um, you know, I I want to be able to deliver something that is a little spicier, a little naughtier, a little grungier. And that's kind of the focus of what I want to do in my work. Uh, am I going to be one studio? Yeah. Am I going to be smaller budget? Of course. Um, will I be able to do uh, like huge special effects like the show Arcane? No. But I will think, I hope, that I will attract people who want the, the nitty gritty, who want the edgy, who want the badass. You know, um, I listen to quite a bit of music, and when I find a uh, new artist, they have independent music videos, like, you know, animated music videos, and um, they're the best shit I've seen. Like, I don't care about watching, uh, you know, Arcane or something. Um, I, I want to watch, like, you know, Yugo. The Rubber Hose uh, music video. Like, I could watch that music video forever. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I'm into. So, you know, that's my market. I feel like I've kind of, like, buried myself. I basically outed myself as a giant, uh, I don't know, anti-establishment person. And for any one establishment, they're probably looking at me like, Oh, I see how it is. But, you know, what are you going to do when you're starting something from scratch? You have to be anti-establishment. You have to say, fuck you. You have to be the guy who says, I'm going to do what I want. And uh, I think that what I'm going to be good at is being the little guy. Being the guy that's like the small little Jack Sparrow little rowboat in front of all of the huge Imperial cruise ships. So, um, you know, I'm really excited about the direction I'm taking. I think that we're going to go really intense and, uh, you know, the Rip the Falcon stuff is obviously, you know, my baby, and that's not stopping, and Sky Titans is going to be a total blast. But, you know, um, from you know, the direction standpoint, uh, I'm going to focus on this podcast and my web series stuff. And then I'm going to really try to connect with bands and really try to get connected with, you know, up and comers too. You know, I want, I want to foster and be a part of this, this new school. You know, we have new hip hop, we have new rock and roll, um, we have good music that isn't the fucking radio. 
uh, you know, I used to think that music sucked. Like, everything new sucked. And, and then YouTube came along, and it's like, I found stuff that I liked because it wasn't on the radio. It was done by the people themselves. So, you know, hopefully... I can join those guys and I can bring that and, you know, we can, we can be together in this. So, you know, that's just kind of like my big hot take and kind of like my plans, my itinerary, my mission statement, if you will, on, you know, what I want. And, uh, I, uh, hope I didn't like lose 50 subscribers from saying I don't want to be Netflix, but, you know, it's true. I, I want to be me. I want to be myself. And uh, I think that I think that I'm the best at being me. So I will see you guys next episode and have an awesome Monday. This is the beginning of the work week, so get a lot of caffeine going. I need mine. And uh, catch you on the flip side. Adios.